Hello, everyone, and welcome to Shamanic Sunday, where I have Jason with me. As I told you just a few minutes ago, I'd be back for us to talk about some of the emotional well-being for everyone that's on this authentic living of how we can step more into our true self from a place of a better connection to our thoughts, our feelings, our emotions, our pain. If you were here earlier, I mentioned I had some pain going on with a tooth and some teeth issues, but that is even a reflection of other emotions that manifest in the body and just so happens to be if root canals, which may be something I have to have, represents letting go of really deep core root beliefs. And a lot of us are doing that. And one of the things we're going to be doing in the retreat is helping you rediscover yourself from a place of truly turning those wounds into wholeness as you complete and collect some of the aspects of yourself you've separated from and then helping you transition and transform some of the lower vibrational energies into a higher state so you can step into a true version of yourself that you may not know who that is. And to kind of piggyback what I talked about just a little while ago is how we're split and we're lost on this journey in between who we've been and who we're becoming. And that's what we're here tonight to do, as well as what we're going to do in the Healing Haven Retreat in Sedona, October 3rd through 5th. You can find the links above and below if you'd like to learn more. But I have Jason, the shaman, with us tonight that's going to teach us and share with us some ways to rebirth. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's super cool. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, I got something itching in my throat. I think it could be allergies. So if I cough or take a drink of water, know that I'm just soothing my body. Good to see everyone um, again, and good to be here again. So how do we ground into our bodies? How do we accept where we are emotionally? How do we process that? How do we turn that lower frequency, slower energy, heavier energy into a more positive feeling, uplifting light, airy energy. Mm -hmm. Man, I wish I felt airy every day. Mm -hmm. um, I was talking to a friend and I said, I would love to bypass just to feel airy. <laughs> <laughs> and the question was this, do you really want to bypass? Do you really want to not feel certain things? Or would you trade that to feel every single thing you could? So from where I came from, I was taught not to feel, not to think, and not to take care of myself. Actually deny that I'm having emotions was what I was taught. Mm -hmm. And that caused so much anger, uh, depression, worry, bipolar symptoms, guilt, and shame. So I would carry that in my energy field. And I carried that for 40 years. Um, and I fed into that every day, making that energy stronger for myself by the way I felt about myself, by the way I thought about myself, what I said about myself, how I would react in codependent relationships, how I would react in a codependent relationship with society, uh, authority figures. So the picture that I'm trying to paint is that I was not a whole person. I was someone who reacted to everything outside of me because that was in control of my emotional state. Mm. Um, so through releasing, feeling, sitting with, understanding, experiencing my current life experience and experiencing those emotions, first learning how to let myself feel an emotion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was so important. Um, I would want to use ADHD as an excuse not to sit with something I felt like, oh, I can't concentrate when in fact I have super abilities to concentrate on many different things at one time. <laughs> so as I learned how to just accept sitting with an emotion, a feeling, an experience was the fastest way and the best way for me to move through that energy to transmute that energy into what I was covering up in myself. 
Mm. So I'm taking that shadow energy. I'm sitting with it. I'm identifying the experience. I'm identifying how I feel. I allow myself to process those emotions. Those emotions may last for me sometimes two or three days. I may be processing a long period of time. Um, some people can process quicker. I'm kind of like I take my time. And if I'm crying for 20 minutes about a situation that I experienced um, in a relationship where I was using manipulation, dishonesty, or uh, fear to drive an outcome, and I could see later on how that damaged the relationship, how that hurt that person, how I shut my light down, and then I was asking them to shut their light down by my actions. So as I'm feeling what that felt like to not be my authentic self and ask another being not to be their authentic self so we could live in pain bodies, when you process that, that flower opens and there's many layers. So that takes a little bit of time. Um, mm -hmm. Energetically, that can be shipped a little quicker when you're in a session and when you have two healers activated mm -hmm. and holding the space, you can actually process that much faster. Um, like today, I was in a session with uh, a beautiful person and they were holding some energy in the spot of their body where we were able to identify what that energy was, to open that energy source up and remove some of that and turn that into calm, peaceful, and, and clarity. The person was able to understand what was happening, but before the session, they didn't even know what was there. They just said, my neck hurt. Mm -hmm. So we were identifying what was there, um, where it came from, and what they're doing to create that potential energy source to stay there. And when they left there, they had an answer uh, to what was happening, a solution to what to do to relieve that, and where to look. So that's some of the things that um, that really help when you're with someone is communicating. Um, but you have to sit in your authentic self and be able to say, I don't know what this is, but here's how I feel. And then when those emotions come up, process them, feel them. Let that energy come out. Because that's, for me, what I believe happens is the energy comes up, you experience it, and you can let it go. I've met some people who can do that through thought, which I learned last week, which I was like, wow, that is advanced. And that's really beautiful. Um, I have experienced being able to do some things like that. And I'm entering into being able to take that and move energy that way for myself personally. But when it comes to hands-on work with another individual, you want to be a little gentle with that. You don't want to do the work for the, the individual, but you do want to open up the space so the individual can experience what is actually happening to them so they are empowered to change that. Mm -hmm. And that puts them in their authentic self mm -hmm. because we're powerful, we're beautiful, we shine. We have these beautiful hearts and we have these beautiful solar plexus and we have all this energy and know-how and our, and our understanding comes from the universe. So as we're open and we start to experience who we are underneath what we've been holding, that energy lifts and we become lighter, airier, um, and you feel more stable. So what I like about the emotional aspect of healing is that you clear that part of your energy, your emotional energy body, and you're connecting that into your whole body. So you're actually feeling more grounded, more open, but less gone, less detached, less, oh, what's the clinical term when you're disassociated? Mm -hmm. You are actually present and those emotions can come up and it's okay. You can sit with them and be present and allow them to pass and then turn your light on where they were. So refilling where it's leaving or transmuting is so important. Kind of like, let's just say there's a blue light in your shoulder and this blue light is sadness. This is all hypothetical. And we want that light to be orange because orange is calm and peaceful. 
So then we would begin to ask, why is this blue? And then that, that would start to move around. And, and if you're receptive and you're tuning into this part of your body, you would able maybe be able to see the pattern that's there, the memory, the experience. And the whole time as the healer, you are just asking this orange energy to open that up. So the orange energy could come in and start to open and move that energy. And if that open and moves and expands, it's being filled with this calm and peaceful energy instead of sadness. So you're actually taking the energy, expanding it. It's transmuting. You're feeling the emotions. It's leaving. And now you have this energy that's, that's new and fresh. So the old energy transmuted. Um, mm -hmm. And then as you're holding that energy, then the next common question I would ask myself is now, how do I sustain this energy? So the steps of doing that would be individualized. For me, when I'm clearing, transmuting, and sitting in this part of my body, then I ask, how do I want to be present in this part of my body? What do I want to hold here? And that becomes my new intention. And as I learn how I need to give myself the opportunity to experience that new energy, that new idea, the new, the new way I want to feel in the certain circumstance that I was dealing with, then I start to practice that. Sometimes it happens overnight and you can just be free of that. Sometimes it takes a while to get used to it. It's like we know how to ride a bike. But sometimes we don't know how to take sharp turns like we would just riding down a straight road. So we learn how to navigate and when we're shifting like, oh, so in this situation at work, this coworker uh, would have an agitated voice. I would feel threatened by that because of a past experience. My trigger's off. Now I'm sad that I'm feeling this way at work. But with the new energy that's in this space, we can tap into that. Like, what is my new response in this moment? And then we're we're like kind of like pushing ourselves out the door to be our authentic self instead of the shadow part of ourself that we used we used to be empowered by. So now we're letting that shadow transmute and uncover that light. So that light, like oh, so now as he's irritated and frustrated, I'm just going to stand in a space of compassion for him. He's going to feel that. And I'm going to understand. I'm going to have some empathy. I'm like, okay, this guy's going through it. And then, man, I hope he feels a little better. So all of a sudden, the energy in your body and your field changes because you're projecting this orange, peaceful, calm energy because that's the choice you've made to stay with. So I think that's like a really, that's a really great way for me because that's what I do. <laughs> and it's simple and it, feels connected so i'm kind of thinking that um that's a good way to be grounded and deal with your emotions once you process so one of the things just so if anybody's new to um jason and us the work we've done and the things that we have shared in the previous videos that we've done and lives make sure to check those out um We've had some really good information come through and some really good healing times and sessions come through. And just to kind of give you a heads up, if you're new to our connection, um, we have done some healing work together for close to a year now, I guess, going on a year in different realms and different ways. And a piece of the work that we're talking about in all of this is a combination of actualizing this energy into your being in your body. And that to have anything in your reality, it has to come home to the body first. So basically, Jason's explaining, you know, how to clear out and transmute these energies that are stuck in stagnant energy that you can release that you can bring a new energy and you can basically come home to yourself. So one of the things I went to Jason for whenever I was had escaped my body and I knew that I need to get my energy and in, back into my body for that energy to come into the body. You have to clear out the physical suppressed energy that's there. And that suppressed energy is most of the time due to suppressed emotions. 
And so like Jason, same with me, I learned how to suppress my emotions, suppress my feelings. And I didn't show up in a place of sharing how I felt or not even that. I didn't even allow myself to feel what I felt. And so when you don't feel what you feel and don't allow yourself to, you're separating yourself from a side of yourself, this side of yourself that um, wants to be seen, heard, acknowledged, and to integrate with that. And so I had always been this positive and look at the positive and shut off anything that felt bad or didn't feel good because it did. I judged it basically. I judged it from a place of that if I'm holy and if I'm in a higher state, I should not have those emotions or, you know, I should not experience those things because that's lesser than the holiness of this. But in the reality is divine is everything. Divine and the divinity is the good and the bad and the shadow and the light and the pain and the pleasure, right? So it's an emotional intelligence of an expanded version of you that comes in the integration of your shadow self, your shadow sides, your pain, and that you learn how to feel that. So you can, well, and you've got to start by seeing it before you can feel it. So you have to see what it is through some of the ways he was talking about. It's a way for you to learn to create awareness with yourself get to know yourself, get to know what's going on in your own intuition, because it's one of the things we're going to do in the retreat that I was talking about some of the things we we're going to do. We're going to be helping you learn how to unleash your own inner healing power, because that's what we're talking about here is unleashing your inner power that of your own healing ability that we step outside of ourselves for that to come from someone. Now, I said so that doesn't mean that you can't go to someone mm -hmm. and that doesn't mean you don't get the healing, but it's the energy behind it and the way you integrate with it. And like I always say, it's not why why you do some. I'm sorry. It's not what you do. It's why you do it. So if you like feel like within yourself that you don't have that power within you to have your own intuition, to have your own insight, to have your own connection, to understand your body and you're running from your emotions then you can't be fully connected to yourself to embody that part of yourself that's going to allow you to heal yourself. And so that's what we're going to be teaching people because when I did go to Jason a few months ago and I knew I needed this clearing in my own physical dimension. And it's in, this is where I'm, why I'm getting back into the physical community and doing physical healing again having been a chiropractor for 20 something years and stepping away from that. For those of you who don't know, Jason also has a massage background. And so this physical component of your physical self that has suppressed these emotions, clearing them so that you can let go of the interference and then you can collect the fragments that you have not, that's been distorted from whatever the interference has been so that you can then collect the parts of yourself that you have not allowed yourself to connect to. And now you can connect to also higher wisdom, higher guidance, your intuition, your um, shamanic abilities, your healing abilities, because now you are able to tap more into the divinity of yourself within. But the way you actualize anything is through your physical being now. And that's what's so important for you to be able to heal yourself emotionally and physically and integrate those layers of yourself into the wholeness and oneness of you so that now you're in alignment with your true self that now can create the life, love, and livelihood you deserve. Absolutely. So last week we were together as well, and I, I love doing this with Dr. Harmony because I leave here and I have a release yeah. in the next couple of days. I have something in me that needs to be felt and that comes up. So in this community we're building and setting up for this beautiful retreat, we're all getting a dose of something already for this. And last week when I left, it was the next day or so, but there was a part of me that, that had to be felt. And it was a really young part of me. And I'm just going to use some real language here, and I'm really going to explain briefly 
when I was a kid, I got pissed that I wasn't treated a certain way. And when I wasn't treated a certain way in this specific event, what I chose to do is not allow myself to feel love from people. So what I've been trying to do my whole life is convince people to love me. Mm -hmm. This is why I'm worth loving because I can do so much stuff and I'm this really neat guy. But underneath that, I was so afraid to feel love from someone because they might hurt me. again. So a situation came up and it activated that emotion. And as I felt that, it was devastating. And I was like, why am I feeling this with this person? I don't even know this person. So it was the person was the perfect look response to some questions I asked that triggered me to feel that deep rejection. So as I'm feeling that rejection, the tears come bursting out, the laughter burst out, the anger burst out. But what I got to do is sit with myself and allow myself or me to make the decision to allow the love into my body, mm -hmm. not to receive it from another human being. Yes. Because they're not responsible for that. I can share that with them. But when I am lighting myself up, it has to come from me. So being denied something which seemed like a ne negative experience was actually a positive twist and turn that I was the one who had the, the, the wisdom and the power to let out to feel in the presence of the person where I was triggered. So I seen the person the following day after I purged all this guilt and shame and anger. And as I started to accept that the only way I'm going to feel comfortable in my life is if I walk around loving myself, letting myself feel the love that is inside of me. So as I open up to that in front of this person, everything that was there that was intimidating, uh, scary to actually be authentic with melted away and I couldn't have another care of what they thought of me or what they w were or weren't going to do for me or with me. I was mm -hmm. so safe and comfortable and I was able to take that shadow part of myself and that scared traumatized kid, those two parts, I was able to bring that in to my light. I was able to feel the love for myself in that experience and let that open up and hold that space for myself. And that is beautiful because then I'm free to create whatever I want to create in that moment. If I want to laugh and bring joy and jokes and just have this bubbly personality and just be bright and raise the vibration in myself, which is affecting everything around me by just getting happier and happier and happier and holding that joy, which I don't know the effect it's having on everyone else around me. It's either triggering them or helping them laugh. <laughs> so <laughs> it could be both. It right? could be both. They could be triggered and laughing. Yeah. So they could be laughing and triggered and not knowing what to do with that. But for me, I was able to be authentic in a space that I wasn't previously. So that is actually a lived experience. And that was like, I can no longer deny that I am a loving being, that in this human body, I, I am allowed to feel the same divine love. And I'm allowed to let that out when I can relax and get out of my way and let that happen. And now wow. it's kind of like, it just sits there and I can tap into that. And when I get out of my thinking analytical mind, I get into my creative mind and my creative mind is beautiful. That's the softer, gentler mind that is open to just about anything. And that, that sees everything as an opportunity instead of something I have to do, a negative, something I'm afraid of, fill in the blank. But when it's an opportunity, that just creates a positive atmosphere in my heart. So that's kind of one of the ways that um, I get to practice that and experience the healing that I'm evolving. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've had quite a few sessions with Dr. Harmony. I've mm -hmm. asked her, can you come over? I need a little help. And I was going through some really scary stuff. And the energy that she was able to 
uh, facilitate coming in and the guidance. And as we're watching these visions happen and we're experiencing past lives and guilt and shame and, and rape and just all these things that were in my body and I'm crying, I'm, I'm, I'm twitching, you know, I'm, I'm doing all the things that happen as that release. Now, uh, because of that, certain parts of my body are more open to express energy to where before they weren't even open. I couldn't even feel energy in parts of my body. But now this energy just is moving around and activated. So that's that's just like, a, uh, I guess, a follow up with what you were explaining, how, how it works for me when we get into this situation. Yeah, and when you're talking about, like, say, the visions and the energy, um, a lot of that is going through different timelines of clearing and healing, especially on a shamanic journey. It's while we're talking about the physical state, the physical being, so many people are going through soul shock and even down to a physical shock emotionally from all of the different micro traumas that we've been through, through these states of emotions, through these states of traumas and triggers and things that our soul has experienced in our soul and our body and our brain and everything unconsciously has an imprint of what we've experienced. And so I've talked about this before that like in that fight or flight mode that when we have in our nervous system is, is operates in such a way through that process of being chased by a tiger. And so when we go into fight or flight, and that memory patterns there, no matter if we move out of it or not consciously, that state of being is still operating, running through our system, through our nervous system, through our body, through our emotions. And until we begin to heal this, well, I'm going to describe what it looks like with the, the imprint. And the, re, the way I want to describe this is it's like if you had a record player and it's playing along, well, the trauma, the micro trauma, actually creates like a scratch on the record in your nervous system. And so when the record is playing and you, you know, there's scratches, you don't hear and things aren't functioning. There's a, there's a disconnect in the circuit or in the music that you're hearing. So there's this disconnect and there's this circuit like breaker that is tripping every time your nervous system fires. And so it's sending all kinds of mixed signals to between your brain, your body, and you know your being, and, and your actions, and your thoughts, and your feelings, and emotions, and your physical state. And so when you have that trauma that happens, and it's still running, then it's important for you to basically remove the interference that is causing the distortion between these signals, between your brain, your body, your breath, your being, and you, it's, so I will tell you, I'm a chiropractor of 25 plus years now, 30 years of quantum healing. I could not do it alone. So that's what I went to Jason for and said, I know I could help people do this, but I need this. And that's when I said, you know, I want, I need to come home into my body. I need to bring all my layers into oneness. I need to clear out this distortion. I need my being to stop feeling like it's being chased by a tiger, even though unconsciously or consciously, I don't feel like I'm chased by a tiger, but my body felt like it's being chased by a tiger. And so based on whatever's running and in, in within us. So these are the pieces of restoring, renewing and rewiring the nervous system and the brain and the, the signals this is where it gets into the neuromechanics of your body, breath, being, and wholeness. And that's what, through my healing work with people for basically 30 years and my personal self, and now having done this with him to be able to take my own journey to the next level of my being an empath and coming home and stop being constantly stimulated by everything outside of me that's triggering all that wound inside of me. Because when you're an empath, the level that you absorb is the level of your own wound. So when you heal your wound, this and other people's stuff no longer triggers your wound. And that's where we're talking about turning your wounds into wholeness and 
helping awaken that inner healer in you to a level that you begin to learn how to identify and connect to your body on a level that you've never made a connection to because you was never aware enough of what these signals are, of what your body's telling you, of what your, your emotions are telling you. And until you make that connection with yourself on that level, you are separated from you and everything else down to the twin flame, down to love, down to um, the career you want, down to your purpose, down to your mission, because you can't connect to any of that until you connect to your true self, because otherwise you're out of alignment with your true self. And if you're out of alignment with your true self, you're going to be out of alignment with your most authentic life and love. So this is the physical state of bringing this into actualization, okay? And actualization meaning it comes into the fruition of your physical life. And if you're not got it in your physical life, it's because there's something operating inside of you that's still sending out a signal that's different than what your mind says or what you know or the healing you've done because your body is sending out these signals that's saying, I'm still being chased by a tiger. And I don't know about you, but I'm done being chased by tigers, mm -hmm. <laughs> I think, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to turn and stand my ground instead of run. I'm Face not, your fears. I'm not going to fight. I'm not going to flee. And I'm not going to freeze. But I'm going to turn and stand my ground. Yes. And Michelle, I know you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Perfect. I love neuroscience. Neuroscience has taught me so much about how to rewire my nervous system, how to take care of my nervous system. The breath for me is the key. Breath puts me in a state of awareness, peace, and calm instantly. There's so many different breath techniques you can find all over the internet. You can find someone who does neuroscience, who does breath work. Holotropic breath work is amazing. Um, getting that breath into your body, opening yourself up instantly puts you in parasympathetic. Um, mm -hmm. For me, I am a huge fan of Reiki. Reiki instantly turns my nervous system into parasympathetic instantly. Um, in the mornings for me, I still wake up and I am like, whoa, I got a lot. Ah. So I instantly ask Reiki to begin to activate and I put my hands right like this. I did it just now and my body is completely filling up with Reiki. I instantly shift. Into Can we take people through like some breath work right now and help yeah, them definitely. get connected? Like yeah. I feel like we need to connect. Yeah. So one of my favorite things to do is this. And just if you want to follow through, uh, jump in anytime you want. Hand on the belly. Your left hand on that belly, that nurturing support. And just a couple circles. Get your hand there. And then just grab it. And then like you're holding yourself, nurturing yourself with your feminine energy. And then with your right hand, your masculine energy, just put that right over your heart. And then just feel that connection happen. There's one powerful breath. It's two really steep inhales. And then a really long exhale, slow. I would like to share a nostril breath now, alternating nostril. If you have the sense of disconnect, if you have the sense of fogginess, if you have the sense of can't think straight, the nostril, alternating nostril breaths will really bring you clarity, really bring you back into the center and really just clear out the fog. So basically you're gonna take your thumb and your index finger that's going to go here, okay? And basically you close one side off, you inhale, now you exhale out the other side alternate now you're going to inhale the same exhale out the opposite 
Inhale the same. Let's do five of those each, full, full round. Last one. Who's more clear? Yeah, that breath is beautiful. It bounces both sides, your hemispheres of your brain, kind of connects mm -hmm. them and clears them out and opens them up. I love that one. And then there's also heart breath. We, we won't necessarily talk about here unless you want to, but there's the heart breath. So we're doing like the belly breath in some ways, the fire breath, the heart breath. Um, and then the, um, well, I said the fire breath and heart breath and the one you did, but, but that was kind of a, did you do a mixture of fire and belly? Is that what you did? Or did, what was the one you did at first? What was that? Oh, the very first one. Um, I think it has a technical okay. intention. Uh, okay. What it does is I think what happens is um, it blasts you full of oxygen um, really quick. So you get a hit. And then as you are controlling your exhale, um, it is forcing you to calm down and concentrate on the moment. Um, there is a name for this breath, but I'm not sure what it is. Okay. Um well, then there's also heart breath. It's really good to get you connected to and center to your heart. Um, but one of the things I think that's so important about the breath work period is it actually helps to neutralize your nervous system like we were talking about because you're bringing more oxygen into the body. And as a chiropractor, one of the things that I saw in people was that they hold their breath. And so most people carry so much tension and they're just, this is that hanging on, you know, when we talk about letting go, letting go of your twin flame, letting go of something that comes from this ability. You're not letting go. You're hanging on, you're holding on to everything. And so you hold your breath. And so it's about bringing the body, the breath, the brain into this balance that brings your being into balance that brings more oxygen into the tissues. It also brings you in a state of the present moment. It helps the monkey mind shut down when you're focusing on something that's keeping you centered and grounded. And then, you know, you're not to mention because you've been holding your breath, you're toxic. And so the, you're got all this toxicity that's built up making you acidic in your body that alkalizing the body, the breath will alkalize the body that brings your body into more of an alkaline state that helps you stop being so toxic. Um, and then again, bringing oxygen in. And a piece of this is when you go through this process, and this is one of the things we're going to teach at the retreat is how to get into your alpha brain and how to move beyond the beta and the theta brain. So in the alpha brain is where that subconscious unconscious information is that is running, that you've disconnected from, that's your inner genius, that in that inner genius within you has the ability to basically heal itself, to connect to that side of yourself that awakens a part of you that has yet to be awakened. And then when you connect to that side and you begin to connect to your body and you begin to master the ability to heal, and transform and loosen just like I just did. I used to never be able to get anybody to pop my back, much less me take a breath and move and everything just ripple. Like it just did. Did you hear that when it just did? I don't know if you even heard it, but I went like that and my back just went crunch. Um, I don't, not that I still don't need to adjust it or get adjusted, but I'm able to keep my body moving and more flexibility more flow because a rigid body and a rigid mind equal a rigid life on some level. So this is about you learning how to be free, flowing, flexible, grace, harmony, right? Yeah. Harmony. So on that note, I do a breath that I call the wave. 
And for me, the way I like to move energy is through a wave up my spine, down my spine, through my entire body. So if you guys want to join in on this, um, kind of just put all your attention down in your root chakra okay, um, and, and take it into this the, uh, end of your spinal cord. Just really try to feel your coccyx. If you can't, just your whole um, sacrum. Just feel that. Just become soft in the lower. <laughs> just move. Did you hear that one? Yeah. So you're going to get some. <laughs> My back out used of this. to never do that. <laughs> so just feel that bone and then put your attention on the inside of that bone. There we go. And then just feel that presence right there. For me, it just feels real nice and cool. So. There's so many different techniques, but this is the one I love about. So what I do is I just do a kind of like a quick breath. We'll do this. Just do this for a few seconds. And then I just take one big breath and I pull the energy up with my intention all the way up out my crown. So let's just start a rhythmic breath and just follow me for a minute and focus on your root chakra inside of your sacrum you'll be breathing with your belly in and out okay keep that up yeah just like that now here in a second, we're going to take a deep breath, but as you're taking a deep breath, roll this up your spine. And when you get to where your whole body is filled, imagine it coming out your crown in a circle around you and coming back into your root. relax into that and just kind of comment on how you feel from doing that so yeah feeling let us know if you participate how you're feeling let's take a look at a couple different comments yeah. and questions maybe love to tap into your shamanic abilities and that's one of the ways we're talking about doing that when you connect to yourself being able to connect to that shamanic side of you trying to heal the past trauma which we've been talking about all along yes. and Michelle, I know if anyone's over it, you're like me. I know you're over it because <laughs> <laughs> we know we're both over it. I know you well enough to know you're over it and I'm over it too. <laughs> no tigers. Right? <laughs> All right. Does anybody have any specific questions? Not just let us know like um, maybe how you're feeling, but do you have any specific questions? Um, we did have like the information from Holly there while we're waiting to see if anybody else does. Do you do like to... Uh, like uh, elaborate a little bit more on the shamanic abilities. I think we talked about that once before, but we can bring it up again. Make sure to check out our other episodes we've done over the last, this is our third week. And just before we go on and you answer that, we are doing the Healing Haven Retreat in Sedona, October 3rd through 7th. We're going to be teaching you how to tap into your innate, your own healing power within so that you can turn your wounds into wholeness and rediscover your true self so you can truly let go of who you've been connect to the physical body and actualize it in your physical dimension as we recreate a new side of you and connect you to that true self and then help you recreate who that is and what your new life looks like from that place we're both entering new versions of who we are and yeah. new versions of our lives. And so, as you know, when you walk this walk and talk the talk, you, well, to talk the talk, you do walk the walk. And so we've been walking the walk and we feel like we're here to help show you the way out of the wilderness, like we've been in ourselves. So. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. 
So Holly, uh, here's exactly what I do. I ask divine source to be present in my life. I tap into that energy. I tap into the energy that we are all connected to. And once I make a connection with that, mm. I simply just call forth my, my shamanic abilities. Will you begin to show me and teach me what my shamanic ability is? What am I drawn to right now? What am I drawn to right now? Holly, what are you drawn to right now? When you look at a drum, do you want to work with the drum? When you see an amulet, a rattle, um, a feather, what are you drawn to? That is the first sign I would go to. And once you find what you're drawn to, that's going to come to you. Grab it and sit with it and only pay attention to it and ask it what it does. Listen to what it tells you. Open that space up. And once you feel that connection, start playing. Start playing. What do you do? Do you move energy if it's a feather? What do you do? Do you clear energy? Do you get energy moving? Do you have some type of power other than that? Can I stroke it near someone's um, light body aura? Is that is that just soothing them? What does it do? What does it do? What does it do? Please teach me what you do. And then feel through it. Feel through it. I have a beautiful set of feathers, and those feathers specifically move energy in the auric field. That's what they do. They take and clear anything out of the auric field that doesn't need to be there. Um, and it's filled with positive energy. So once you tap into that, like the drum, I was using the drum today. They will tell you what they want you to use when you develop a relationship with them. Since mm -hmm. it's oneness and since everything on this planet you must have a relationship with to be in oneness, you're already in it, but to be in conscious oneness, you have to present yourself to that, that tool. So, um, and I'm using tools because in my shamanic experience, I use things outside of my energy and my body to actually assist. That would be like using sage. I mean, what shaman or healer doesn't... Um, hasn't experienced sage or sweet grass. So you can take the sage. And what does sage do? Some There's so many varied opinions. Uh, a really powerful friend of mine, uh, he's a wizard. <laughs> I love this guy. Um, sage blurs the lines of energy. It softens everything in his, his point of view. It, it makes the energies intermingle easier. So you can actually cut those hard, fast, irrit irritable energies where it's just mm -hmm. you can actually sage that to where it becomes. It's cleansing and clearing. These are these are some um, takes from him. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that's how I would start that journey. I would actually grab something and begin a relationship with it. What can I give you? How can I be of service to you? And will you teach me what you do? Once that's going, your shamanic abilities will open up. The more you clear, the more you become open to receiving information, it'll come the way it comes to you. So I would, I would ask myself, how does information come to me? How do I hear it and feel it? What works best for me? And I would start practicing what you feel the most connected to and keep calling in through a, through a heart of gratitude, through a stomach of gratitude too. Use that stomach energy. Use that. That's anchoring it mm -hmm. to you. So you just, oh, yeah, there it is right there. I feel it now. Oh, come on in, please. Please, energies, come in. Let me see what my shamanic ability is. Will you teach me what it is? What amulet should I use? Just feel it and start getting that joy in the moving your heart. Oh, yeah. Let me please experience working with my favorite tools. Will you teach me what to do? Once you start really calling out to that, they will magnetize towards you and your shamanic abilities will begin to open up one step at a time. And part of that, too, is awakening your own inner healer, right, yes. within you, <laughs> because a shaman is a healer and heals from the inside out. And the whole journey of this whole twin flame journey and the rebirth is a shamanic death. So it's about going through the alchemy of who we've been to who we're becoming and taking the journey across that bridge of rediscovering this true self that we were talking about a while ago. And so 
know that in that process that like when I mentioned, you know, that we're going to be doing all this in the retreat coming up in Sedona, that these gifts are going to be integrated through the process. We're going to be helping you become your own healer, which means it is helping you become your own shaman. And so those gifts, our goal is to not just go do something for you, but to help you connect to you, help you embody you, help you embody these gifts, help you become the shaman and your own healer. And in that, we are going to be using some of these instruments. So we're going to be using drumming, rattling, you know, rattles, shaman, you know, shaman uh, light language, like whatever it is. All these things are going to wake up within us and the group of people that is going to magnify and create even a greater power between all of us that wakes us all up, meaning we all heal from this. And in the process, you get to unlock a side of yourself that gets to come out and play that's been wanting to play. And you don't even have to think about what do you have to do? Because when you get in that kind of energy it and you get in that, it tells you what to do. <laughs> you, like, just you, just, you, you just surrender <laughs> and everything you need to do comes to life. And yes. you can't teach that. And that's where being in it, in this environment, in this retreat, and in the work we're going to do, it just does itself and you just show up, but you have to trust that you have to trust yourself. You have to trust the process. So Holly, you know, you would be a great, and lots of people will be a great candidate for the retreat coming up. But if that's something you're truly wanting to do, I highly recommend you check out the links above and below about more information on the retreat, because that is something that you will step into in this journey with us in the retreat. Yeah, most definitely. So, yeah. Is we have any more questions? See, we have, let's see, we had um, here Indian Mexican warrior shaman. Oh, that's so cool. Very nice. cool. I love that. Love that. Love that. Love that. And you know, my background as a shaman is um, Indian and Cherokee Indian, with my ancestors were mostly Indian. And you do light language and you started speaking it earlier this year and it's new for you. Beautiful. That's beautiful. <laughs> Oh, perfect. So that was most definitely for you, Holly. <laughs> and yeah, so um, yeah, I would love to hear how you work with that. I would love to hear how you channel that. Um, I would love to hear how that works with you. And I'll answer this. So so it is the same. It's literally just a com. And just so anybody, if they're not seeing this, that the question is, is light language the same as speaking in tongues? Your mom did it all the time. 
Well, the speaking in tongues comes from more of like a religion kind of context around it. It may be infused with a little bit different thought process, but it truly is the same energies coming through. Where in light language, you're removing the boundaries of the thought and the religious context to connect it to more of your centered heart space. So it's coming between the higher self and into your heart and out very authentically. Doing the same thing, you know, in that religious context, but it doesn't have that label all wrapped into it. And that doesn't make either right or wrong. That's truly the belief systems or the truths of whoever's doing that. So I'm not saying either's right or wrong. It's just a matter of the thought process of what's built around speaking in tongues. So, yes. So beautiful. You're welcome, Holly. You're welcome. You're very welcome. So I'm going to thank all of you that's joined us for our Shamanic Sunday and make sure if you've not checked out our last two weeks that we've done to go back and watch some of the other information that we've came here to share with you and we will be back next sunday to do it again at uh, 9 p.m eastern time and then that being said um that's going to be my last day here until i move to sedona and then uh, we'll be doing the retreat in sedona coming up october 3rd through the 7th and would love to see you there so make sure to check out the information and really just the goal is to invite in anyone that that resonates with because obviously the goal is is that you show up in a place of truth and trust and receiving because that's what we are here to do is share with you from our hearts and if you're not ready to receive then it may not be for you yeah, and that's okay, okay. too yeah. right that's okay too so i want to just give jason a big thank you yeah. for being such a <laughs> coming here and sharing with us and then being such a huge part of my own transformation my own journey and my own healing process because i know we've talked about this in our past different videos that we've done that we both feel like we couldn't have made it through what we've been through without each other yeah, so perfect time Yes. So thank you, everyone. So we will see you next week. Much love. Much Take love. Care. Bye for now. Thank you, everyone. Thanks.